Hello class and welcome to week 10. Week 10 goes from April 6th to the 10th. I hope that you enjoyed some of the really nice weather this weekend. Engaged in some self-care. You guys have been sharing with me how you practice self-care. Um, so thanks for sharing and I'm going to summarize it this week. Um, but I just wanted to start off with um, the week 10 summary. Um, so if you take a look at this week, we will um, be starting chapter 11, school social work. Um, and you'll be reading about school social work and listening to my lecture about school social work um, and taking advantage of some of the other resources in the Blackboard course shell. Um, so on Tuesday, your participation assignment, the mental illness reflection, is due. And then on Thursday, the chapter 11 reading assignment is due. Both of which can be found in the week 10 Blackboard course shell. I would love to see you at um, either or both of my virtual office hours this week. So as I mentioned previously, I will hold office hours on the days of our class at the times of our class. So on Tuesday, April 7th and Thursday, April 9th, um, both from 1230 to 130. And if you'd like to join the virtual meeting, you will go to these links and click on the appropriate one. Um, again, it's not mandatory, but it does provide a great opportunity for us to connect, to say hi, and for you to ask me any questions that you may have. So I did want to highlight some of the things that are in Chapter 11 in regards to school social work. School social work is an area of social work um, that sp is specifically focused on um, the role of social workers in the school, though um, one of the roles of a social worker in a school is to be that liaison, that connection between the school and the child and the family. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of those uh, specialized skills and roles um, that school social workers take on. So to define school social work, it is the provision of services in educational settings by credentialed school social workers. So if you were interested in becoming a school social worker, it does involve a very distinct body of knowledge and unique set of skills um, because you're working with children. So it's important that you know specific laws and acts and rights um, regarding children and their families in a school or educational setting. Um, the primary goal is to ensure social functioning and success of every student. Um, and so this could take the form of being a liaison, as I mentioned. Um, school social workers may be involved in assessment and testing, case management, developing programs, providing support groups, uh, doing individual counseling, empowering teachers, working on school reform, and being involved with cases of abuse and neglect. Not every school social worker and every school does the same thing. It really depends upon the district and how they are utilizing their um, personnel. Meaning if there's a social worker and a school psychologist, they may have very different roles, even though they may also work together on certain things. Um, one of the biggest differences generally is that school psychologists will be doing specific ap academic type testing for students that might be at risk for disabilities or if there is a concern that they might have a learning disability or another type of developmental disability. School social workers are more likely to do psychosocial assessments or assessments of a child's safety um, or their social emotional functioning. But again, it really depends on the school district and what roles that school social worker um, plays. So I do want to just run briefly through the history of school social work. So prior to the 20th century, most children did not attend school. But by the early 1900s, most states started passing legislation that made school attendance mandatory. And this was a really significant turning point for children's rights. And hence, the specialization of school social work um, was founded. You might be thinking, well, well, why? You know, why, why was there this need? Um, 
with more children attending school, this created a much larger and diverse student body. And it was quite an adjustment to the new, not only academic circumstances and requirements, but the cultural change as well. So the early school social workers uh, were considered visiting teachers, like we spoke about um, early on when we were discussing the history of um, social work and social welfare programs. Um, in the 1930s, though, it, things did take quite a turn because of the Great Depression. Many states um, couldn't afford, they couldn't fund the um, to pay the school social workers or to pay for programs, and this, actual, this specific profession almost disappeared. However, once the country became more economically sound, um, in, 19, in the 1940s, the American Association of School Social Workers um, they it, they were it was created and in 1955 this um they they became a part of the NASW which you might remember as the National Association of Social Work and social casework um came about and where the, this case social case workers were really looking to identify any problems or issues in the 1960s the focus kind of changed of school social workers um, they started looking at more like school reform and inequality and educational opportunities. They would tackle issues, um, for example, like racism. Um, social workers also at this point around the 1975 and throughout 1990s also became case managers for children with disabilities. And that came about, um, as you read in your book, um, about um, the 1975, the Education for All Handicapped Children Act, and then in the 1990s with the creation of um, the IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which is what was formerly the Education for All Handicapped Children Act, and IEPs, um, that which is an individualized educational program. And anyone that had a documented disability would have this individualized educational program. So that and more of what you read in the textbook should give you a pretty good idea of the evolution of the school social worker. Um, the, as I mentioned, the school, school social workers serve to link the school, the home and the family and the community by providing a variety of services. And some are direct services where they are working directly with an individual, with the family, with the child in the school, um, maybe with the family. They also are engaged in specialized services such as mental health intervention, crisis management and intervention, and facilitating community involvement in schools. They um, also are involved with monitoring and evaluating the organization of school systems and policies. So there's a lot of things that a school social worker could be doing in a school, and again, depending on that particular school or school district, um, they may be involved in a whole host of things. Um, they might be um, trying to get programs to address dropout. They might be instituting programs to lower the rates of teen pregnancy or to help individuals that, um, that are pregnant and in school. Um, bullying programs is another example of things that social workers are involved with. I think I mentioned to you in class that when I was at a school-based caseworker that I did um, the banana splits, which was a type of support group for children that suffer, uh, you know, suffered the consequences of divorce and loss. Um, and I also did another group called I Screamers, and that was for my, my, my little ones that needed a little bit of that you know, social and emotional management and learning how to control their emotions and express them appropriately. Um, so social workers can be involved in, in many different things. School-based social workers um, generally work with students who are at risk. So this could be students who have physical, developmental, or learning disabilities, and students who are living in poverty or are homeless um, these students, these populations are more likely to have negative, negative school experiences. They're more likely to develop emotional or behavioral problems, and they're more at risk for never reaching their full learning potential. So social workers are more likely to be involved with children at school 
um, when we have these particular risks, okay? So it might be a student who has a learning disability. It might be a student who is living in poverty and that school social worker is that, again, that liaison, that connection between um, the family and the school and the child to make sure that they are geared, they are either guided toward the most appropriate services, um, they handle truancy concerns. They may also um, making sure that those students who need it will, will be a part of um, the school breakfast and lunch programs, or maybe, you know, make sure that they have the supplies that they need um, and, and, and things like that as well. So um, there's really a whole lot of things school social workers can do and are involved in, in a school. So the specific knowledge and skills that are required for someone to, um, you know, provide services as a school social worker, they need the ability to strengthen the connections with homeschooling community by identifying and linking those constituents to create the best learning environment for the student. Again, the student is the primary focus and the well-being knowing that many of these students already are at risk because of their circumstances then it's the it's the professionals and it could be the school social workers job to ensure that this that child has the best learning experience that they can possibly have another um knowledge uh, knowledge base and skills is the ability to build mutual communication and support among all participants in the school system including parents students, staff, and the community. So, so school social workers may also do programs or trainings for the staff um, in the particular school building so that they are more aware and educated about the unique needs um, or circumstances of its students. When I worked as a school-based caseworker um, and we had just experienced the terrorist attacks of 9-11, I was asked to work with the staff, work with the teachers on how to not only talk to them about what happened in a developmentally appropriate way, but also to provide um, information on what might be some warning signs, um, some, some red flags that they see in their students that maybe they're experiencing distress or anxiety. So that could be something, um, you know, whether it's during a crisis or um, any other situation that a school social worker might be involved with. Another um, set of knowledge and skills based um, for so school social workers is the ability to develop preventative and healing intervention programs for problems in school systems, such as sexism, heterosexism, and racism, and the ability to provide meaningful and relevant consultation and in-service programs to teachers and school administrators concerning student needs and rights um, and counterproductive school policies. So that involves some of the things that I just mentioned, but also to ensure that the policies that are in place for that school are not counterproductive for its students and its community. And the last is the ability to provide training and support for conflict resolution programs and other student support programs, like I mentioned before, such as drug prevention, sex education, alternative suspension programs, and parent education programs. The unifying perspective and philosophy for school social work is that every child is entitled to the best possible learning environment. And while you have those students who are at risk, that is why professionals like school social workers is so important to have because they know these risks because of, the, of their education, of their training, and they're able to identify those who are at risk and help them in a way that they receive the services, they receive the support so that they can have the best possible learning experience. So in our Blackboard course shell for week 10, you'll find more information and resources regarding school social work. If this is something that you're interested in, you can follow some of these links. Uh, what is a school social worker? Talks a little bit more in detail, as well as the um, require educational requirements and the job outlook. 
Um, this is a great resource here. It talks about all the possible services that a school social worker might provide. And after looking at this, you might even say to yourself, well, what doesn't a school social worker do? Or what? And it doesn't mean they're going to do the, all of those things, but you would be trained um, in, in the ability to provide those services or, um, you know, programs. Um, if you have any questions about, um, you know, school social work or week 10, go ahead and put them right in there. And then you'll see the chapter 11 reading assignment, which is due on Thursday. Um, and then at the end here is the mental health reflection that is due on Tuesday. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please know that I'm here to help always. I really hope to see some of you in my virtual office hours. Um, I miss seeing you. I miss being in class with you and having the lively discussions that we have. Um, but I wish you well and let's keep, uh, let's keep communicating with each other and in contact. Have a great day and a great week 10.